Welcome back to Undulations. In this video, I want to talk about one of my favorite devices, which is the Castle 1.5 from Basil Instruments. It is a semi-modular synthesizer, and to set up sounds on it, we use these little patch cables and put them into the patch points on the front of the device, and then we change the control settings that are going to be things like pitch, timbre, LFO rate, wave shape, and some other modulation settings. Now, a castle at its core is digital. There's a chip down in there running code, and that's where the different synthesis modes and sounds come from. But when you're setting it up, when you patch it, it's very hands-on, it's very tactile, and it feels very analog. In this video, what I want to do is take a step back and show a way to make the castle digital yet again. And by that, what I mean is I want to show a way to encode a castle patch. If you make a code for a castle patch, that enables us to make random patches quite easily. And so that's going to be the hands-on goal at the end of this video, is making a random castle patch. And random presets are something that I really value in other things that I have, like Volca Drum or some software like Microtonic from Sonic Charge. You make a random preset, random patch, and that can be inspiring. It can give you sort of a jumping off point for something else that you want to do. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so how do we go about encoding a patch on the castle? I mean, one initial question is how much information is actually in a castle patch? If I take a picture of it, and even a bad picture, uh, this JPEG is 250 kilobytes. And then you could uh, sort of like crush that down and turn it monochrome and low quality. And uh, this picture is uh, one and a half kilobytes. Now, we know that it can be smaller than that. I mean, you could have a diagram or a template, for example. So here's a patch diagram of what you're listening to. It's got the wires on it. It's got the knob settings on it. I'm calling this the Video 60 patch because this is the 60th undulations video. But if you really want to make significant progress into getting the information content distilled down on a patch, you move away from images and into a description. So take a look at this. So on the left side, I've got what I call a simple description. And so it's got the plus patched to the bit in, the triangle LFO patched into the wave shape, the square LFO patched into the timbre mod, and the stepped LFO going into the pitch mod. And then I've also got a scheme here for how to set the knobs based on clock times for where the hour points. So 10 o'clock for the pitch modulation, uh, 8 o'clock for the pitch. And if you look, I've got this sort of laid out kind of like it is on the castle. And then I've got the wave shape there on the bottom. And this is the sort of description that's useful on Instagram or if you were DMing or emailing somebody patch details, but how do we take it further? All right, we can go to what I have on the right side here, which I'm calling a coded description. And so this is very much the same thing, but just taking a lot of the characters out of it. And if you were sending this to somebody, you'd have to have agreed on what order the knob orientations would go in. And so this is already down to 82 bytes. It's going to start getting a lot smaller though, because what we can do is instead of using these names, this next step is going to be to go to hexadecimal. And so right now, all I've done is just put a different label on the patch points. And so now instead of writing something like plus or bit, we're just going to put three and a. So 3a tells you where to put wire one, e8 tells you where to put wire two, D6 wire 3, F5 wire 4. Now, what about the knobs? And uh, this is like something straight out of the Martian. I've got described here a 4-bit knob. And so as you can see, these different orientations, they go around and 
This is not great resolution. It's not even as good as using hours and half hours, uh, like the, the time indication of a knob orientation. So we're gonna stick with it for a little while and then try to improve it. And so then here we get the coder description with four bit knobs of the patch that we're listening to, the video 60 patch, Without a whole lot of effort, we've gotten this patch compressed down to eight bytes, which is good. But what if we want to add more than four wires, for example? And how do we go about incorporating randomness into this? Now, the first thing that we need to do is to move from the hexadecimal numbering system to a binary numbering system. And many of you are probably familiar with these sorts of things. Some of you are probably not, but just think of it as a way to label things. It's also a method of counting. And so I've got just a table here of the first 16 hexadecimal numbers, which can be held in one digit, and the first 16 binary numbers, which can be held in four digits. And we can take the video 60 patch code that we just had in hexadecimal and convert that into binary. And then I'm gonna start doing this as something more like a character bit code or a QR code, however you want to think about it, where that for zeros, I'm going to use a white or empty square. And for ones, I'm going to use a black square. And so this is what I will call a patch code or a patch bit code for the video 60 patch. And I've got those last four blocks grayed out because it doesn't really matter what they are. They're not part of our encoding. And so from there, we're gonna add in wire slots and wire flags. And a slot is just gonna be a place where the, you can put another wire, okay? So instead of just four, I'm gonna go ahead and move it up to eight wiring slots. We'll come back to that in a second. And then a flag is gonna be one of those either black or white bit codes that tells us whether there's really a wire there or not. All right. And that's going to give us a route to being able to randomize things. So if I want to have the original video 60 patch over here on the left, I can convert that to this newer type of patch with the flags and the eight slots. All right. So then there are four empty slots that we're not using in this patch. Okay. So then this brings up the question of why use eight slots? And I come back to a couple of things that motivated me to do this in the first place, which is the three wires challenge from Boop E on Instagram. And that's just where that you are limited to three wires on your castle. And it turns out you can get a whole lot of different sounds just by sticking with that number. It's enough to be complex, but it, doesn't let you just go completely out of control. You gotta really set things precisely. Also the patch together challenge that was started by my little junk drawer on Instagram. And this is a case where that I was going to have my daughter do a patch. That was the deal is that you just give somebody some patch cables and say, set this up and turn some knobs and let's turn it on and see what we get. So it's sort of a random patch in that sense. But my thought was, well, how many wires do you give somebody for this type of thing? I gave my daughter six wires.
and so for this stuff that we're doing today i decided on eight slots because if you think about flipping a coin eight times that's sort of what it's going to be like for how many wires we ultimately have and if you look at the likelihood on that it's really unlikely that we're going to get zero wires on our patch it's also equally unlikely that we're going to get eight wires on the patch most of the patches are going to have three four or five wires sometimes you'll get some six or seven wire patches sometimes you'll get some one or two wire patches i think it'll be a good mix but then because i wanted this encoding to be a 9 by 12 block of bits we've also got these other four things on the left for unclaimed bit spaces and that's because you don't need a flag on whether there are knobs or not and so that's eight unused bits and that turns out to be enough to add an extra bit to every one of the seven knobs so we can use five bit encoding on the knobs and so if you look at this colored encoding in the middle hopefully this makes it a little bit more clear what is going on where the red bits those are going to be whether we have a wire or not so there are eight different possibilities to have a wire all right the bright green those are going to be an encoding of the starting patch point for the wire the bright blue that's going to be the encoding of the ending patch point of the wire and then these pastel groups of five down here those are going to be for the knobs and so the video 60 patch code with this new five bit knob encoding looks like this uh, block over here on the right and that's sort of the final pattern that i'm ending up with now how do you do five bit knobs well doesn't turn out to be anything particularly like easy like exactly 10 degrees or whatever 9.54 degrees steps but the way that you use this is you just eyeball it from the diagram so we'll end up taking a five bit code and then getting a decimal number from it so like 25 and then we'll look at 25 on this diagram and be able to set our knob to that value so it's going to be pretty straightforward so what does this mean it means that every possible 9 by 12 bit code can be turned into a castle patch and it's not a very big code but if you count up the bits it's uh, 107 i'm not even going to count that last little one that we're not using and 2 to the 107 that is like it's uh, something like 1.6 times 10 to the 32 so that's over 100 quadrillion quadrillion different castle patches and so there's not a whole lot lost in a way by this digitization and I really want to be clear though that when I'm talking about patching the castle with a code don't forget that there's a very human and sort of play element when you work with a castle it's always about setting up a patch and then tweaking it as you go and a lot of the things that you see on Instagram this thing that I even show at the end of the video, it involves turning the knobs. And so the castle is more like a instrument in a way. And the patches are just really the tip of the iceberg of setting it up. And then you can get more into how to play it on the fly. And so this is where the title of this video comes from, that you can think of this uh, patch code sort of like pulled out into a line and it is sort of a castle DNA where that you've got the eight wiring slots and then you can just go down and do five bits per knob and what do I mean by bits I mean that we're going to flip some coins and so to get a knob value we're going to be throwing five coins and heads or tails uh, I'm, I've been calling it castle penny patch that's just uh, what i have on hand it can work with whatever coin you want so our supply list of things that we're going to need we're going to need a patch worksheet we're going to need a patch point reference we're going to need the five bit knob reference and we're going to need our castle and some patch cables eight at the most and 
I want to also be clear that I'm going to be using the Basil Dude Mixer where that I'm taking signal out of the I.O. port on the castle as well as the typical audio out and watch volumes on this thing. I find my castle to be a little bit hot and so I like running it through the dude anyway to kind of like bring the volume down a little bit. But the reason that I'm including the I.O. as part of the output, like mixing that in with the regular audio out, is that there are some nice patches that use audio from the I.O. And then lastly, just look out for anything weird. If we're trying to make a random patch and we are starting to go from the minus terminal on here to the plus terminal directly, let's just not do that. We'll skip that one, all right? So that said, here are the things that we need. This is the patch worksheet. I'm gonna leave this on screen for a second so people can maybe take a screenshot and then this is the patch point reference where we've got the different four bit codes and then the associated hex code and then where that is on the castle. And then this is that five bit knob reference. And so you can go to five bit pattern and turn that into an angle to orient the knob at. All right. So let's go ahead and give it a try. All right, so now we come to the hands-on portion of this video. And to start with, we're not gonna need the synth. We're just gonna use the patch worksheet. And I've got the five coins here. And I've got one side marked, the other side not. And I'm gonna take four of them and put them into a bag here. This has been a pretty good way to do it. Just sort of shuffle them up and then to start with, our first check is going to be whether we have a wire in slot one or not. Okay, that's a uh, zero, so we're not going to have a wire in slot one. All right, next thing is going to be for slot two, and I'm just going to flip this coin. Uh, that is a yes, so we are going to have the slot one wire, and then what we have to determine after that is where it's going to be routed from and to. And so these are already pretty mixed up. I'm going to just deal them out left to right. So that's one, 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 one. Okay. That's the way it turned out. We're going to write that down on here. And I'll do one of these and uh, then probably just sort of speed up through the rest of them so we can get a quicker result. All right, so I mixed them up good. I'm going to put them in the bag, mix them a little bit more. And I had to pick something that wasn't going to be too loud, like a cup, but you could do it that way for sure. All right, and uh, struggle is real. Okay, going to deal them out as before. Uh, and this is for the destination patch point. So that's one, zero, one, one. Now, if we look on the worksheet, one, 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 which is our first one, is the uh, LFO step. And so I'm going to write that here. And then this current one, one, zero, one, one. If we look on the worksheet, that is the oscillator out. Okay, so uh, I'm going to just write that down. All right, and then um, 
we're going to keep going. All right, so then now we're going to use all five of the coins to do the five bit knobs. And for that, just going to throw them into the bag, shake them up, and then deal them out as I was doing before. And so it will go zero, 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 one. All right, that one's easy to find. That is number one on the knob reference. And uh, so I'm just going to write that down over here on our worksheet. All right. And the last one, the wave shape. One, zero, 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 zero. Okay, so on here, that is 16. All right, so the worksheet is done, and now it's just time to patch this up on the castle. All right, now we've got the worksheet, the castle, patch cables, and this uh, knob diagram to go from. And so I'm gonna go ahead and put in the patch cables. Since I don't have two of the I have left sockets. I'm just uh, using the other side of that wire, the um, second oscillator out. Okay, yeah, and I accidentally had some stuff into the plus and the minus instead of the left and right, but I've fixed that and I think it is set up correct. And so now we move on to the knobs. For the pitch mod, it's gonna be set to the one. The oscillator pitch is gonna be set to four, the timbre modulation set to nine, then the timbre itself set to three, then the rate mod set to 24, then the LFO rate itself is at 28, which is pretty far around, almost maxed out. So I don't know what that's gonna do. But then last thing, the wave shape is at 16, which is almost right at the top. This particular encoding doesn't have right at the very top, but I figure that's okay since the settings are pretty fine as it is. All right, so I'm gonna turn it on and we'll see what we've got. A little bit of clipping. All right, so that's kind of underwhelming, but I'm gonna take it as a point to play with it a little bit and we'll see how it turns out. I'm not gonna change any patches, but I will drift some of the knobs a little bit. Yep, part of the problem is that the randomness had us having the, a lot of stuff going into the pitch mod, but uh, it wasn't turned up. So that one started off a little bit slow, but I feel like with some tweaking, it turned into a pretty interesting patch. And I think that's fair game on a video like this, where we're just trying to sort of see where we're at with it. But what I really want to do is do a handful of them where that I just do it as it is, don't tweak it at all. And if it turns out interesting, then I'll probably post that on Instagram with the hashtag Castle Penny Patch. If any of you feel like doing the same, that would be great. And uh, I'm gonna take this 
code method that we've developed in this video and move it to the computer. That's going to make things faster to automate them a little bit. And we'll start to also get into uh, something to do with genetic algorithms. And ultimately, it's all about finding cool patches on the castle. And so thanks a lot for watching. I wish you all good explorations on the castle. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you.